at some point, you can't go back. Hello everyone, Dylan Schumacher, Citadel Defense. And I'm filming this a couple days after the midterms have occurred. And I think that at this point in American history, it is confirming that we have reached the point of no return. I say that because over the last two years, uh, we have experienced some of the most tyrannical, brutal uh, government overreach, lockdowns, outright lies and deception that we've probably ever experienced in American history. And coming into the midterms because of that, uh, everyone, right, right, left, and center, were expecting you know, a, a red wave and that they were going to vote out uh, the Democrats by and large. However, that didn't really happen. Um, yeah, the, the Republicans probably, we'll see, we'll see, because they're still counting the votes, um, will win control of the House and, and maybe the Senate. Uh, however, you know, it, it, it doesn't really seem like there was this massive rejection of the agenda by and large. Now, I'm certainly not one to shill for the Republicans because I think by and large they're a bunch of spineless cowards who don't do anything. However, I think it's really interesting that people by and large in our binary two-party system uh, have not chosen the other option because they're so fed up with the current state of things. So there could be a couple reasons for that. Uh, there could be, you could say, well, there's outright, just, you know, just massive voter fraud on a massive scale, which, you know, we can have that discussion sometime. The second option is that this is what people actually want. Uh, I think a really good example is if you look at Minnesota, uh, Minnesota where the governor is Tim Walls, had some of the more uh, intense lockdowns in the country, had the massive riots during the George Floyd thing, uh, had a lot of problems where they specifically went after businesses and closed them down because they were open during COVID, which again turns out to all be a lie. Massive, massive issues. But Tim Walls was reelected in Minnesota. Now, could that be just because of pure uh, voter fraud? Yeah, maybe. But more than likely, I lived in Minnesota for a very long time. It's because the people there want that. And they continued to vote for that, no matter the consequences. If you're a fan of history like me, uh, and you look at empires, all empires throughout history, right? There's a point where they reach where at some point, they're no, they've, they've so far become disconnected from their original principles and what made them an empire and what made them great to begin with. They're so far removed from that, that they are a different people uh, and they're heading in a different direction. And that's, that's that magic point of no return, right? Everyone always wants to liken it to Rome, which is fine. I can, we can do that. I'm, I'm a big Rome fan. And I think there's a lot of parallels there. My point being that if you look at all empires, they reach a point where they are no longer the same people that created and made the empire. And at that point, it's that point of no return because it's a ride to the bottom because the things that made the empire no longer exist. And that's where we are in American history. There is not a large scale value of freedom or the Republic. We keep calling it a democracy. America is not a democracy. Anyone who says that is either a retarded or B, doesn't understand history and the nation that they wish to govern. In either event, they should not, of course, be allowed to lead the government in any way, shape, or form. Our federal government, of course, has become this massive, massive bloated thing, uh, which was in no way in line with the original intent and founding of the nation. You have the rampant moral depravity in the public sphere, which is a whole nother video. My point is, oh, there's all these issues, right? Where the government now exists to hunt its own people rather than protect its own people. There, there are a massive amount of issues. And even if everything I just said was massively untrue and misinformation and incorrect, and you could prove me incorrect at every turn, even if that were the case, there is still a massive amount of mistrust or untrust, the trust is completely broken, between a significant portion of the United States population and the institutions that are supposed to help this whole thing function. Namely, the press, right? The press is supposed to be our watchdog, and then the governing institutions themselves. The trust between the people and those institutions is completely shattered. And instead of those institutions seeking to repair the trust, because I would argue they're the ones that broke it, 
Uh, they just badger you and browbeat you with how stupid you are and how you are the problem and you should just do what they say. And if you've ever been in an abusive relationship, you will know that that is not a way to earn back trust. So because of all of that, because of all of these issues, the, we've reached the point of no return. Because all of these issues create this massive mountain that would need to be climbed in order to overcome this. And there are no people, there are no men willing and or able to climb that mountain any longer. If you roll back the clock a couple hundred years, of course this, this nation was built by men who climbed hills like that and who defeated monsters like that. However, in our current generation, we no longer have leadership that is available to conquer these problems. And so the hill becomes so insurmountable that the likelihood of overcoming it is extremely, extremely low. And that is why I say we have reached the point of no return. So what does that, what does that mean, the point of no return? That sounds very doomsday. How, what, what does that mean in practicality? What it means is, is that for the rest of your life, you will live in a declining and dying empire. And the, the actual fabric of society where things function, like right now, you may or may not be able to walk out your house in a generally safe neighborhood and go to work and get paid on time and the internet still works and electricity still flows to your house, no problem. All of those things will begin to unravel. Uh, when the food shortages start and then the electricity problems happen and then they force you over to this electric car but that won't charge anyway because they shut down the coal plants, then all these problems start to become compounded and you are going to live in a increasingly compounded problematic world where basic things that you used to take for granted no longer function. This is driven by a government that is incompetent and a government that will browbeat you into submission because they think that you owe them allegiance regardless of the circumstances. That is what a point of no return looks like and that is where we are heading. So you could say, okay, Dylan, uh, I don't believe you, you're an idiot, click away. Or you could say, I do believe you, so, so what? That sounds pretty horrible, like what do we do now? And I would say the only hope that, that you're gonna have is uh, what I've heard called the Benedict Option, right? Which refers to the monks, but basically creating smaller communities inside of your community that are self-sustaining. Uh, if you don't love Jesus and you don't go to church, now would be a good time to fix that because you need to find like-minded people that will be able to provide mutual support in times of hardship because that's where we're going. And if we're alone, we're not gonna make it. You're going to need a community of people, uh, a city within a city that is going to be able to continue to try to function and offer mutual support as things get harder, because that is inevitably where we are going for. People continue to vote to make things harder and have no interest in turning the ship around, either because they don't believe there are cliffs ahead, they don't see the cliffs ahead, or they are simply just uninterested and they have their head down looking at their phone while the ship, you know, splinters into the rocks. If you've been at all paying attention, nothing I'm saying to you should be too shocking or too new. However, again, I would urge you to start building and build those communities of like-minded fellow people that ideally you live next to or you live by and you're able, to, you're able to form a city within a city that's gonna sustain you through the difficult times ahead in the decades to follow where we continue to watch our society crumple. So you look at that and I say all that and that could be a pretty grim outlook. That could be sound really depressing and, and kind of dystopian future. However, I am filled with hope. Uh, one, because as empires die, uh, things arise from the ashes. That's universal throughout human history. There is always something after. And we will get to look forward to the thing that comes after the dying of the empire. And I may or may not live to see that in my lifetime. However, over the next several decades, as things completely disintegrate, there will be an after. And I have hope for what we could make the after. If we have a bunch of strong local communities that are able to stick through the dark times, what will emerge out of that will surely be better than what we have now. Secondly, I have hope because Jesus is Lord and he is the master of history and he will surely continue to do good to his people. If you do not worship Jesus as God, now would be a good time to look into that. There are difficult times coming. And if you are at least vaguely aware of that and have done minimal amounts of preparation for that, you are ahead of the vast majority of people. Continue to find people that live within your vicinity 
that you are able to build that city within a city so that as the difficult times come, you and your values and your people are going to make it through the tough times and be able to emerge into that something that comes after. You might not live to see it because this might take decades. However, your children and their children will be better equipped and better off so that the future of America stands much brighter and better than it is now. Do brave deeds and endure.